So Klaus, Klaus Vormann, an absolute pleasure to meet you. Um, I have to say before we start that your name, I, I guess from perusing so many records over the years, has, has had attached to it such exotica. I, I always think it's one of the most glamorous names that I can think of and that you must have surely had one of the most glamorous lives. Mm. Klaus Vormann, I just always get so excited, so it's unbelievable to meet you. Well, that's uh, great. Uh, uh, and that, that journey that you've taken that I guess is, is one of the reasons why I always get so excited when I hear the word Klaus Vormann mm. is, is represented in this, 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 I don't know what you'd call it, this oh, celebration a, a of your life. Set, you you, know. You'd call it a box yeah. set. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for something more romantic. You know? <laughs> so how did you decide what songs to do, what order to do? I mean, I guess the I'm in love again and... That, that, that is a particular reason why that begins it and, and uh, you know why you did that song. Beatles were playing on stage yeah and of course they were an unknown band nobody knew who the Beatles were you know so he just uh, didn't want to play anymore he wanted to sit with Astrid on the sofa and do a little necking you know <laughs> so he gave the bass to me and said come on Klaus you play now yes and uh, me with that bass in my hand yeah. so I didn't dare go up on stage. They all said, come up on stage. John said, come, come, you know, and play. And I didn't do that. It was early morning hours, so the club wasn't really full. Yeah. It wasn't packed with people. Yes. So it was okay. So I sat in front of the stage. So I sat here. There was the band. And we, the first song was a Fats Domino song. Mm -hmm. And Paul said, I'm in love again. He knew immediately which song it was. He couldn't even remember that situation. Really, yeah. Yeah. And Paul was actually playing the piano in those days. Yeah. So George was playing guitar, John guitar, uh, Stuart bass, Pete Best was still playing the drums. So I was just playing the bass. Mm -hmm. And that's, I told Paul that. Yes. And he said, that's a great idea. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. And he decided, he actually said, come down to my studio in uh, Essex, Sussex and uh, let's do it. One of the things that was interesting about the Beatles is that they were always wanted to learn and find out. They had an own, their own intellectual sense, you know. That, that clearly, you know, with, with, with your little gang, beca became a very important part of the seed that, that exploded. It yes. wasn't just the rock and roll, it was this other yeah. side. That's the thing about this band. They always were st striving for the next thing. Mm. And when they saw us come in there, we were aliens in those clubs because you had all the rockers with the greasy hair yes. and all the, the, the studs, you know, what do you call them, the, the you know, leather shirts with those buttons on yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and uh, we were coming in with the suede jacket yeah. and the scarf round yeah. the neck and the soft hair, yeah, you know, yeah. we were kind of aliens mm. and they always look, oh yeah, they look funny, you know, I wonder what they are like. Yeah. And we didn't even realize that, we just saw them play, we loved them and they tried, they tried to be tough and the rockers yeah, and yeah. stuff, it was rock and roll and bit by bit they said, come on Klaus, got to go up there and, and, and talk to those guys yeah, yeah. because he can speak English and they all couldn't speak so yeah, yeah. so I took a record cover which was um, a walk down run by the ventures with, with a man walking across the street and uh, on scratch board I did it yeah. and I showed it to John and John said go to Stuart he is the artistic <laughs> one in the band so from that moment on we just all had a fantastic time mm. because Stuart was so uh, uh, hungry yes. for information. Yeah, yeah. And I knew John was too. From and then when we sat together and went for breakfast or dinner or whatever, you noticed how hungry those people were to get on with it, do something new. It's interesting when you did the revolver sleeve. You talk very much about how you were interested in. Uh, hair in a way and it is a cover yeah. about hair yeah. and you talk about your hair when you first went to see them you talk about a softness yeah, yeah. and it sounds daft but in a funny sort of way the metaphor of the hair I think is always interesting about 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 that period yes it definitely was a very important thing it was uh, it was so new that mm. people would comb their hair into their forehead yes. <laughs> I know it sounds daft but it's yeah it's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah at first you think it looks girlish should we do it and then it suddenly became a trend and um, the people picked up on it and it was sensational at that particular point. I didn't do it because of me, mm. I did it because I knew the public out there, they knew lots of hair, that's, you know, the Beatles. Yeah, you know, who, who went for it first, do you think? 
Well, the, uh, it was actually Stuart who yeah. had a similar, I mean, you have this thing called Pilzkopf in Germany, which is just the hair down, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then you have a different version, but it's slightly to the side. So Stuart had it slightly to the side like that. Yeah. And so not, not all the way up here like this. Yeah. And then, uh, but this Jürgen, he always had it right yeah. uh, over his forehead. And then they followed Stuart? the rest of the group? Well, they all wanted to do it, but they were shy about it. And then John and um, Paul went to visit Jürgen Vollmer in uh, Paris mm -hmm. and said, come, cut our hair. We want that haircut to yeah. you. You got it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what he did. Yeah. And then George at the same time or some shortly after that did the same thing. Because it's also interesting about the Beatles, that sense of competitiveness within them, who makes a movie. Yeah. Again, the hair sounds that, but it's, a, exactly. it's part of the thing, isn't it? Who's yeah. going to make that first risky move? Right, exactly. And then the others need to catch up and overtake. Yeah. And the other thing that I've always thought was extraordinary about your life was that there you were as a musician and that you were taking part in the beat boom in Britain, but you still retain the life of the, of the designer, of the, of the graphic designer. I mean, why, why, did, you know, why did the two things keep going at the same time? Well, they didn't really. You see, once I decided I was going to do music, the graphic was very much in the, right, okay. in the back. Yeah. And when John came and asked me to do the revolver cover, it was, uh, <laughs> I mean, in a way it was, oh, uh, but it was uh, at right. the same time because I had to work myself back into doing art. You know, okay. I hadn't had a pen in my hand for right. ages, and suddenly you're supposed to do a cover for the fa most famous band in the world, and it was really tough, yeah. really, really tough. All John said between the, the band all together, but John was the spokesman in that particular case, said uh, you can do what you want, but uh, if you have an idea, you got the job. Yeah. <laughs> so I listened to the tracks, okay. went to the studio, and I was just so knocked out. It was just so incredible, so beautiful. And the music was so far ahead you yeah. know, that uh, you thought, my God, you're going to lose all those fans they had. You, you thought know, that, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. definitely. Yeah. You listened to the LP. I mean, uh, um, uh, Robert Soul was great. But they had things they wanted to put on this LP, like Tomorrow Never Knows, yeah. with the backward tapes yeah. and, the, and the squeaking and all those noises and stuff. That wasn't, you know, nobody did a thing like that on a pop record, mm. you know. So that was a problem. Right. But I didn't even think of that. I just yeah. did this cover, and somehow I knew they wanted something avant-garde that's not... They didn't tell me. I just knew. They mm. said, you do it. Mm. And that's what I did. I said, black and white, that's it. Yeah. And I showed them the finished cover, and they were all pleased. Yeah. And Brian Epstein was in the corner sobbing. <laughs> what was What's the matter with him? You know? <laughs> and uh, after a while, when he put himself, pulled himself together <laughs> yeah. again, uh, he came up to me and said, Klaus, you gapped the bridge between the music and the public that cover is perfect and now I'm relieved and I know the people are going to accept this music. Did you appreciate at the time that you were part of what we might as well call the family, that, that there was a kind of family around the Beatles and you were very much a part of that now? Well, yes, we were friends, that's for sure, but I don't think that was actually known in the public or to the open. Mm. Uh, but we were friends, and that's just it. And we are not, I was not friends of the Beatles. Yeah. I was friends of George, I was friends of John, yes. I was friends of Ringo, yes. I was friends of Paul. Yes. So that was all I knew. And of yeah. course, we exchanged our experiences. They talked to me about music, mm. John showed me how to play a good rhythm guitar, mm -hmm. so those things, and I told him about other things. Yes. So that's what. And, and did the Beatles, this thing, get, get in the way of the friendship? I mean, did it start to become a bigger and bigger thing in the way of the friendship? No. You see, they were hungry for something that's homey, I would call it. Mm -hmm. They always wanted to have something around them that was uh, more human than this craziness out yes. there. So anything that reminded them of 
something uh, like a mother or an uncle yeah. or anything they knew before they were famous was yes. important because yeah. when you're famous the problem is I mean I'm not famous but when you're that famous it's very hard to know who is really your friend and who is not mm. and that's why the old friends that uh, they are there forever yes. and I have been friends with them I never disappointed them mm. 